It's been a minute. I'd like to welcome Camry back to the channel. If you remember, two years ago, we launched the Rig, which is an accessible four-wheeled wheelchair of sorts made almost entirely out of bike parts. And we've sold them in almost all 50 states. It was a bit of an adventure trying to keep up with those orders through a pandemic. But it turns out there's a market for inexpensive accessible equipment. All of the rigs we've sold are manufactured by Utah Trikes right here in the USA. Their building is about 30 minutes south of here, and that part's not gonna change. But we do need a space of our own where we can start constructing and working on some of our new inventions, which is what we have back here. Our promise to you is that Cambry and I will never make a profit off of the sale of these machines. This is just like a passion project for us. All the money that we make from this goes right back into the business to make this world a more accessible place. And viewers like you are a huge part of what makes all of that possible. So thank you for watching these videos. We bought this building behind us to expand Not A Wheelchair and take things to the next level. The building is currently a duplex, meaning that it's two buildings in one and we need to bust down at least like five walls to make room for everything we're doing. We have a lot of work ahead of us and a lot of walls to break down, both metaphorically and physically. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let me give you a little tour just so we can remember how it was when it all started. Coming in through the front door here. We have a small kind of little greeting room. We're gonna knock out this wall here to kind of expand things. In here is where we're gonna have all of our computers. In here, probably printers, kind of a break room area. But out here is where the magic happens. Big, wide, open area. We have a garage door over here. I can't tell you what's inside of this box yet, but we are gonna bust down this wall right here so we can access the other half of the building. This thing, though, is freaking sweet. It's an all-electric walk-behind pallet stacker, which we're gonna use quite a bit, and it's one of the reasons why we have to knock down the walls so we can get to the other half of the building. This is where this box is going to go eventually. In here we have some bathrooms. And down this hall, this is where we're gonna break open a big door to get into the other side, and some massive storage rooms. This used to be a dance studio. It's interesting to see how thick it is. You can see the hardwood floor was resting on top of these rubber pads to kind of isolate it. I'm no expert on clogging, but it seems like a good surface to handle that kind of thing. And finally, we get to the other half of the duplex, and these walls as well are saying goodbye, just so we can have a wide open area in here to kind of show off our different machines. Now that we have all that documented, I think it's time to change things up. Much better, one wall is down, and that one's more to just kind of widen the showroom area of Not A Wheelchair. The wall we have here is so we can get the massive forklift through the hallway into the other storage rooms. So this one's a little more important.
And now we have easy access from the large main room into the storage rooms. Of course, once we clean up our mess. The company that used to own this building before us was a photography business. And this area back here was one of the giant infinity walls where they had the curves on every corner. So if you ever took a picture of something in here, it would just look like a solid white background going off into infinity. But we don't need that for what we're doing, so it all has to come down and a whole lot of drywall patching has to happen. One of the construction materials we use here in the United States for the interior of buildings is called drywall or sheetrock. And it might sound strange to people living outside the United States where a lot more concrete and block is used, but working with sheetrock is actually pretty simple. It's made of a mineral called gypsum, which is sandwiched between two sheets of paper. And when I say it verbally, it does not sound very strong, but when it's mounted up on a surface, it is pretty hard. To manipulate the sheetrock, we slice through one side of the paper and literally just break it in half and then slice through the other paper on the opposite side. And we get the exact size of sheet that we need to work with. The gypsum inside is that white powdery stuff. Here inside of the photography area, we do have some holes we have to patch where if the wall was concrete, it would be fairly complex and difficult, but since it's drywall, it's pretty easy to add little pieces in place and put the mud over top. And it'll be like it was never there after we paint it. To patch little holes like this, I'm taking a piece of plywood, sticking it up in the hole with a little screw to hold on to. Then I can drill in both sides of the plywood and then one screw through a little block of drywall. And once we put mud over this, you'll never know it was there. So we have the arches drywalled up right now and you might be wondering how we do the edges so that it's a clean finish on this side. And that's done with corner bead. and the mud will sit down in between this and cover up all the screws. It's nice that the space back here is more like warehouse and assembly space, so it doesn't really need to be perfect. Once all the drywall's been hung, we use something called mud to smear over the top and blend pieces of drywall together. If we were doing this in like a residential building, it would need to be pretty smooth with lots of coats. But since this is industrial and no one's really gonna see it, I'm just gonna call any imperfections texture. Another thing we're doing is we are swapping out the original fluorescent light bulbs and installing LED light bulbs for two reasons. One, you'll notice in here the room is far more yellow, which is not my favorite. In here, the color is a bit more white, which all has to do with color temperature. This is a 6500 and this is a 5000. And while the color might be more aesthetically pleasing on this side, the real reason we're switching is because of the power consumption. The fluorescent lamps use about 5,000 watts when everything is turned on, which is almost as much as charging an electric vehicle. 
But when we switch to LED bulbs, the power consumption drops by half. Now when everything is turned on, we'll only be using around 2,000 or 3,000 watts, which is like two hair dryers running at the same time. Not that I have much experience with hair dryers. Initially, I thought that I would only paint a few walls, but it turns out, since this building is about 20 years old, most of the walls are covered with an old school off-white paint, kind of yellow, which doesn't look very good on camera. And since I plan on showing how we manufacture a lot of our accessible equipment here, we need to make things look good on camera. The sprayer I'm using is an airless sprayer, which as the name implies, does not use any air. Instead, it compresses the paint and atomizes it out of the little nozzle. It's good for throwing a lot of thick paint really fast, which is what we're going for here. One good, nice, thick coat. My favorite part of painting, though, was laying down the blue, since blue is a part of our Not A Wheelchair logo and the color of the globally recognized handicap symbol. I think it turned out pretty slick. We even got my mom helping us with this part. So far, I think things are going pretty well. We've knocked out a bunch of walls, made everything white, added a bunch of blue to brighten things up. Now we need a little epoxy and some carpet. The process of laying down epoxy over concrete is rather fascinating. First, we use a diamond grit concrete grinder to smooth out and resurface the concrete, getting rid of any rough spots, lips, or paint spill. We went with a local company called Quality Pro, it turns out, when the owner saw what we do here at Not A Wheelchair, he said he would do all of the epoxy work as a trade for one of our rigs, since he had a family member who could use one. It's cool seeing how everyone really comes together to help move this project forward. The reason we're putting down epoxy is because it looks cool and also seals the concrete and makes the floor way easier to clean. Yeah. Concrete absorbs spills like oil, where epoxy does not. Plus, the two-part hardened coating lasts for about 20 years. The colored flakes add texture, and it's kind of cool seeing them get scraped off and saved to be used in other projects in the future. The whole thing is then coated with a clear coat of the same two-part epoxy by people wearing those cool special spiked shoes. Bridging the gap between the walls and the epoxy floor covering, we have some industrial rubber baseboards. In the front of the shop, we're putting down some industrial carpet. It looks almost completely black at first glance, but with speckles of color sprinkled throughout. This is where we're gonna have the office space, as well as a showroom for our inventions. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we can have a few extra machines for people who would like to rent one out for a weekend here locally, but that'll come in the future. We have to get caught up on our existing orders first. One thing that surprised me, mostly because I've never really thought about it, was the physical size of our street signs. The street sign is made from two long sheets of translucent acrylic, nine feet long and three and a half feet tall. It's translucent so that when the lights turn on inside of the sign, the design on the sign illuminates. As for the office space, this room is where the designers will be hanging out with our custom-built computers. These desks, the one we're working on, were donated by Uplift Desk. They have the ability to go from super tall standing desks all the way down to a floor sitting desk, and of course, anywhere in between. Super accessible. I've actually been using an Uplift Desk at my own home for the past three years, so it's super cool of them to join us here at the new shop as well. Aside from just motoring up and down, these desks can hold 350 pounds and have all different kind of desktop surfaces to choose from. They even have a desk that comes with a whiteboard top. Very interesting. 
We stuck with the black laminate, but maybe since the desks are modular, we'll branch out and do something a little more exciting in the future. Since from the personal experience of having purchased and used one for the past three years at home, they have zero issues and will be lasting us a really long time. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to check them out, and huge thanks to Uplift Desk for helping us get Not A Wheelchair headquarters up and rolling. When choosing components for the computers, we tried to land in that sweet spot of power and price. Not quite the latest and greatest, but still good enough to last for years. We're using the Quadro brand of graphics cards that are designed specifically for workstations and computer-aided design, or CAD. A lot of our stuff gets figured out in a digital space before coming online into the physical reality. Our whole goal with Not A Wheelchair is to make inexpensive, non-medical, accessible equipment right here in the USA. And since you've made it this far in the video, I think it's only fair that you see a couple of the projects, sneak peeks, that we're working on right now. Something I'm excited about are these new sand tires we have for the rig. We're calling it the Rover Package. If you remember from some of our previous videos, the rig has a difficult time in sand. It gets kind of stuck. The Rover Package with its wider tires should make it easier to drive on sand. We're also making a stair lift. This one is currently semi-disassembled and not quite ready to show off yet. But when we're finished, it'll cost a fraction of what other similar lifts are currently priced at. And we have a few other projects in the works as well that still need to remain a secret. Obviously, we're not entirely done setting up yet, but you get an idea of what's gonna happen in this space. Eventually, we wanna design our own physical wheelchair. Since currently manual wheelchairs cost around four or five thousand dollars, and I think we can cut that in half. Also, it's always really, really fun for me to meet people in real life who watch my videos. So if you see me or see us walking around, feel free to say hi anytime. But this particular building is not really the place for meet and greets. For one, I won't always be here. I've hired a fantastic team to help facilitate the expansion. This building is for people to come who might actually need our machines and not necessarily just to hang out. That being said, if you own a business that sells equipment that might help us achieve our goal of making accessibility more inexpensive and want to show it off here on the channel, feel free to let me know. We're setting up shop and we can take all the gadgets we can get. Plus, I am extremely excited to show you what is inside this box right here. We've come a long way from welding two bikes together and it'll be fun to see what we can accomplish in this space. All of which is thanks to you guys for watching our videos and helping make this happen. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you around. <laughs> Nailed it.